There's a saying in the movie business, tell me a fact and I'll learn. Tell me the truth and I'll believe. But tell me a story and it will live in my heart forever. Well, the story of Marlon Briscoe is one that should never be forgotten. Forty years ago, as a rookie with the Denver Broncos, Marlon Briscoe became the first African-American quarterback to start a modern professional football game. Uh, Marlon was a pioneer. He was a trailblazer. But that trail was filled with many obstacles, both professional and personal. And that's what makes his story meaningful and worth telling. Although Briscoe set a rookie record for quarterbacks with 14 touchdowns, uh, the exciting elusive player they nicknamed the magician had to deal with pro football's inherent prejudice against black quarterbacks. And despite his record-setting rookie season, Briscoe never started another game at quarterback. He went on to become a wide receiver and earned two Super Bowl rings with the Dolphins, but then descended into drug addiction and despair. Marlon's eventual comeback was as dramatic as any down-to-the-wire football game, and his story is one of the most inspirational in NFL history. Growing up in the racially divided projects of South Omaha, a young Marlon Briscoe was given a magic box that would forever change his life. When I was around nine or 10 years old, uh, this bully used to chase me home. And my mother got tired of this bully chasing me home, so she told my cousin Bob uh, about the situation. So he came by, uh, came by the house, and he uh, said, I'm, I'm gonna come back over here tomorrow. And when I leave, you're never going to run from anybody again. So he brought over this box uh, full of uh, footballs and basketballs and baseballs and they were all dusted uh, with old equipment. And one by one he taught me how to play each one of those sports including boxing. With the help of the magic box, Marlon gained the confidence he needed to survive and learn the fundamentals of baseball, basketball, and of course football. With visions of Johnny Unitas in his head, Marlon would run football drills in his front yard, throwing the ball in the rain and the snow. A natural and dedicated athlete, Marlon played quarterback from his days in the Pop Warner League to Omaha South High School and Omaha University. In 1968, he was drafted to play not quarterback, but defensive back for the Denver Broncos. At the prophetic advice of Omaha University coach Al Coniglia, who knew Denver was only one of a few professional teams to hold an open training camp, Marlon negotiated a three-day trial at quarterback. After that, he said, I'll start tackling people. They had like eight quarterbacks in camp. And you get your long range, short range, and medium range throws. So they would get 10, and I was always the one on the tail end and I would not get 10 throws. I knew it was, wasn't going to be a level playing field, but uh, nevertheless, I prepared myself for that, you know, both physically and mentally, and uh, made sure that all of the throws that I did get, that, uh, you know, I did the best that I could do. Although he wasn't given the opportunity to play quarterback at the time, Marlon would soon find himself in a position to make history. On September 29, 1968, Broncos head coach Lou Saban summoned Briscoe from the sidelines in the fourth quarter against the Boston Patriots. Starting quarterback Steve Tinsey was out with an injury and the backup wasn't performing. With his first play, Marlon completed a 22-yard pass and nearly pulled off a fourth quarter comeback. The next week on October 6, 1968, Marlon made history as the first starting black quarterback in professional football. Marlon set a rookie record with 14 touchdowns that season and was the runner-up for Rookie of the Year. But he wasn't even allowed to compete for the starting quarterback position the next year. That 1968 season with the Broncos would be the first and last time Marlon would play quarterback. Marlon was released by the Broncos and returned to Omaha jobless. The writing was on the wall, and Marlon knew that to continue playing professional football, 
he needed to change positions. So he trained as a wide receiver, a position he had never played before, and went on to become an all-pro wide receiver for the Buffalo Bills. He led Buffalo in touchdown catches in each of his three seasons there and in total receptions twice. Legendary coach Don Shula, seeing his athleticism, traded a first round draft pick to bring Marlon to the Miami Dolphins, where he earned two Super Bowl rings and was an integral member of the only NFL team in history to go undefeated. He then went on to play for the San Diego Chargers, Detroit Lions, and New England Patriots before completing his professional football career in 1976. Marlon moved to LA to begin his post-football career as a broker. He found that things came a little too easy. He had no hurdles to jump, no adversity to overcome. His life began to tailspin and led him down a path of addiction, despair, and on several occasions, nearly death. I moved out to California, you know. Uh, I wasn't a big city kid, you know, and I didn't really realize the pitfalls of uh, making bad choices uh, in terms of friends and where you hang out. And, you know, uh, I was always conscientious as a player, getting in shape, staying in shape, um, and, you know, invest my money and all that stuff. So I did that. But when I got to L.A., I kind of let my guard down. All of a sudden, you know, I didn't have to get in shape. You know, I didn't have to be disciplined. Uh, you know, I could let my guard down in terms of partying a little bit, you know, uh, more than I used to. And so, you know, at first, we were having fun. I was having fun. But with that fun turned into something else, you know. It turned into a bitter addiction that I never thought would, 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 would take me out like that. Over the course of the next decade, Marlon battled a drug addiction that left him homeless and penniless. After leaving a San Diego jail in 1990, Marlon decided to turn his life around. He returned to L.A. and began teaching and coaching football at a high school in California. Years later, he became a volunteer at the Boys and Girls Club in Long Beach, California, where he now serves as director. Marlon is a mentor to the youth and uses his life experience to help guide them. It's not only about drugs, too. Uh, it's about being any, anybody that you want to be, not letting somebody tell you what you, you can or cannot do. So there are a lot of messages out there, you know, that uh, I've experienced. Uh, I tell them that, you know, even though uh, you do positive things, you do things that merit, uh, uh, merit certain opportunities, Sometimes those opportunities are denied, but you can never give up. You gotta be persistent in life and, and face these challenges. And, uh, you know, even when things don't go right, you know, you gotta stand up to those challenges and, and make them, and hopefully uh, they'll turn around in your favor. In June 2006, West Omaha Films announced a plan to make a movie based on the rise and redemption of Marlon Briscoe, tentatively titled The Magician. Marlon's story is not only one that speaks to sports enthusiasts and football fans, but to anyone who has faced adversity and overcome the odds. Four decades have passed since the magician broke the colored barrier in professional football. His story is as captivating now as it was then. In recent years, Marlon has gained widespread attention from national media outlets including ESPN, The New York Times, and The Denver Post. In 2006, Nike launched a widely popular football apparel campaign based on a fictional high school football team, the Briscoe High Hawks. The campaign featured Marlon and other high profile players and coaches. In 2007, Marlon was featured in ESPN's book and DVD entitled Third and a Mile, The Trials and Triumphs of a Black Quarterback. That level of attention combined with Marlon's character and reputation positions the magician for Hollywood success. NFL Films and Nike already have expressed interest in working with West Omaha Films, and the movie's website has welcomed thousands of unique visitors. Interest in Marlon's story has reemerged after 40 years and is poised to stand the test of time.